Hi, everybody. Thanks a million for tuning in today. Um, I'm delighted to be joined by Steph. Steph, thanks for coming on. No problem at all. No bother. So I suppose this particular time, business has kind of died down a little. We're getting into a little bit more of hopefully of a routine and a bit of a setup um, for some of our students that we would work with. They're kind of moving into maybe more dyslexia awareness month and creating more suggestions and awareness around those particular pieces. So we've Steph on today who's going to give us a, a different wheelhouse of suggestions, which would be would be great. Um, Steph, do you want to give us a little bit of background first as to yourself and, and bits and pieces and then we'll kind of we'll move through the the session then today with providing some sure. tips and suggestions yeah no problem at all my name's steph mcsherry and i'm the creator of kinderama so primarily it's a multi-activity program that gets delivered into creches and preschools uh, during the pandemic like we all did we pivoted online and we recorded some online sessions and you can find those on youtube you can find them on the highbrow app and there's a complete ad free version on kinderama.com and i find that schools and preschools are using those for their kind of wet breaks and times when the kids need to be active but can't get outside to play so yeah we're all about activity and fun and using the imagination <laughs> which is fabulous yeah I suppose yeah. that moving around piece is, mm. is so essential no matter what age group we are really to yeah. be honest Steph and I suppose from from your let's say insight Steph into working with kids and you know even their parents how vital has that been do you think to have that active element that they illustrate regularly on a day-to-day -day basis yeah I think it's hugely important particularly for preschoolers I think we are getting more sedentary in our lifestyles anyway and you know a, a preschooler is supposed to be active as in up and about and moving for at least three hours a day and i think sometimes mm -hmm. if there is a screen on that's kind of encourage them to go into that zombie like uh state that they're not they're forgetting the movement part and i know it's difficult i know when mums and dads are tired and you know trying to get outside if the weather's been miserable and it has been miserable a lot of the time over the summer it's difficult to get up and about so i guess that's what we're trying to do is encourage people to get up and moving. Fabulous. And, and do you find certain, let's say, routines and systems and, you know, different, let's say, movements are maybe easier to implement or, or more popular than other stuff? Or is there the kind of ones always, that are harder as well, maybe? <laughs> I think that's why we kind of wrap it up in the imagination bit of it. Like if you can kind of put yourself in the headspace of a three or four year old, it's much more fun if you're pretending to be a dragon or if you're going off on a space adventure. So although we're doing a lot of movement, I don't know that the kids are aware that we're doing that movement. They're just doing it as part of their adventures. And I'd say the same for mums and dads. You know, if you're crawling about playing hide and seek or getting under the, well, not under the couch, you know, that's small, in a, in a cupboard somewhere, you know, you're still moving, you're still active. You know, the floor is lava if you pull down all the cushions and jump around the sitting room. If you have a kitchen disco, it doesn't have to be the, okay, now we have to go out and do our exercise. Do you know what I mean? If we make it fun and we make it part of what we do every day I think that really helps everyone and I know when I was at home with my smallies they're a bit bigger now but just having those movement breaks or getting those little doses of fresh air even if it was just outside kind of getting a, a washing up bowl and scrubbing our toys or doing something like that it just resets everyone everyone feels a bit better and able to cope with the day Amazing. Yeah. And I, I suppose with the, you know, with the back the school side and, you know, people going back into a routine then, Steph, do you find that, you know, it's maybe harder for parents to find and carve out these times of our outside time? Or do you feel like it's enough of what they're getting maybe in a school or even in a preschool setting? I think we've just come out the back of kind of doing, running lots of mini camps. So our mini camps would be just two days and they're kind of like a practice for either preschool or school. They're, they're aimed at children that are three and four. And I think what I would say to parents is don't get stuck in that rut of the stress of getting ready for the money. You can still make stuff fun. You can still, you know, break a, a teary outburst with a, you know a tickle or a jump around or oh come on let's do this and you know you can be the the adult can be the person that stops the stress and stops the tears and stops that not to suppress it but just to kind of change the dynamic and get everyone moving and back on track and it doesn't have to be oh you forgot your coat again you know it can be oh you silly goose have you forgotten your coat again come on let's go and get it you know 
just the ability that we are the ones that can change that mood and change that dynamic and particularly in the mornings when it's all a bit stressful <laughs> yes that never-ending preparations and getting everything mm. organized and out the door and yep. I suppose that that movement piece though throughout any part of the day I, th I think is essential but do you find Steph there are particular periods of the day where it might be a little bit better for kids or for parents to move more or do you find that that's probably quite individualistic as well it is individualistic some I know I've got a boy and a girl and I know when my boy comes home he is the type of child that just needs to just to chill out do his own thing I make sure he has a snack and something to drink but he just needs to be left alone to kind of get over his day whereas my little girl is very active likes to go straight out the door running around with her friends so I do think it's individual and I do think you as a parent need to kind of work out what little things you need and I know for me um I need peace and quiet a lot of the time which is obviously hard when you're working with kids and you've got kids but you know those little um loop uh i don't know what you call them but they're like sound busters if you like for your ears that kind of drown out that real noise but you can still hear what's going on um sometimes if i've taken a gang of kids you know on a long journey i've actually put in ear pods and i'm listening to a podcast now they're all screaming and laughing and having a great time but it just means i'm not going into that stress bit and i've been known to you know with that same group of kids going okay we're all going to take a deep breath you know, and I teach, we teach breath a lot in Kinderama as well, even though, again, we wrap it up as a nice fun exercise, but it's again, just tuning in to kind of, how do you feel like we, we do um, turtle pose a lot. So turtle pose is if you can imagine you've got your legs kind of the feet are touching and you kind of go right down into your shell and you tuck your hands underneath your legs and you curl into it and you can't help but feel calm when you're in that pose. So when I get a group of preschoolers to do it, we all go into our shell and we do a big sigh because that's a great way to get a little one to do a deep breath, to do a big ha. Ah. And then they say, oh, do you feel any difference? And they might say they feel sleepy or they feel slower, but actually they're feeling calm. And the mm -hmm. trick is the adult is feeling calmer too. So if you're doing it and you're teaching your little ones to do it, it's just a moment where you can go, okay, I need to reset. Because otherwise we tend to go up and up and up and up and more stressed and more shouty and more, and we just might need a moment to go, oh, okay. And that might be shaking and wiggling around ourselves. So wrapping that up and saying, okay, come on, we're gonna do a silly dance for two minutes and then we'll go back to unpacking the school bag or doing the homework or whatever it might be. So yeah, I do think movement, I think breath, I think changing it up as much as you can, all of those things are really important. Yeah, that's so great, Steph. And as you said there, even the, the silly activity, I think breaks out mm. of that monotony, doesn't it? Of one thing after the next or kind of, you know, almost at times like fast forwarding through the day to, oh, well, again, need to get to the end or I need to get to dinner time or, you know, after dinner time. It's just about how do we break up and have those intervals, you know, more throughout the day and, and spread out as well. Yeah, because even if you've got a classroom of hyper kids, if you turn off the lights and if you say, OK, we're all going to put our head down on the desk or we're going to lie down on the floor if there's space, just the energy in the room completely shifts. And, you know, I think maybe us as facilitators or teachers know that, but maybe as parents, we forget that. So just, you know, I, I remember um with my own two water completely transforms them these days it's going into the sea but when they were little having a bath and i just used to yeah there used to be points in my day like four o'clock in the afternoon where i'd be just like okay you're getting in the bath there's only two years between them so i'd shove them both in the bath you know we might have a bit of music on and a little bit of boogie and put some bubbles in but it just reset us me because I could sit there and have a cup of tea make sure they were safe but it was just a little bit of a breather and they were occupied so yeah all those tips anything that you find kind of helps reset the day maybe keep a list of them somewhere because I know in the height of it you forget it and just those moments that you can reset yourself and reset them it's just like whoo yes very much that's great about the water step completely agree and mm. that's that still this time of year if they can get to the sea and if it's not massively colder they're still able to wear wetsuit you know there's such relaxing yeah. um energy coming from from uh, being in water we find as well even if it's you know maybe there's lots going on in the day even running your wrists under the tap can really help mm. or you know or even splashing getting... your face with cold water yeah very much so yeah you still have 
that kind of a little a little dose of it instead of you know full full on let's say bath yeah. time or or going off to the sea but yeah very much so whenever you can get access to submerging in water it's it's yeah. really very really beneficial isn't it really yeah and I think any time um I have a son that's um neurodiverse and I used to find touch with him was particularly important he was definitely a sensory seeker so anytime I found he was getting overwhelmed I'd give him a little gentle rub kind of just between the shoulder blades up here or I might give his palms a little squeeze and I find myself doing that with kids that are in the group that I can see that are getting a bit overwhelmed and that you can see them starting to get so those I think touch and and perhaps being aware if your child is a sensory seeker or a sensory avoider and to kind of gear your day up to help them as well so maybe the headphones are a good idea to have on hand you know maybe it's it's saying to the teacher look he finds loud noises quite overwhelming so that your teacher knows um, and within preschool too, loads of places that I go to now just have a couple of sets of headphones around so that if there's somebody is finding it overwhelming, and let's be honest, you know, 22 kids in a room is overwhelming for most of us, you know, having that little kind of barrier really helps them. But I find the touch stuff as well is really helpful. Yeah, I completely agree, Stefan. And the, the sensory side of, of how evident that is now in, in mm. lots of kids with different backgrounds and, you know, the tags and the uniforms and, yeah. you know, all of those. And then and the they bright might look lights different. and stuff. Yeah. 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 The lights very much so in different colors and, you know, things that are quite vibrant and, and quite alert. And yeah. anything else from that side, Steph, that you found useful even in your own home context that you thought, oh, God, that's made a huge difference. Yeah, definitely. Uh, we would have some classical music or even meditation music going um, just in the background, kind of early in the morning. And to be honest, that started purely for me. <laughs> I just found if the news was on in the background or the radio was on and it was all quite loud music, I found I was getting a bit like, oh, yeah, this is too much, trying to get the kids organized, trying to get myself showered and out the door. It was too much. And I just found having that music and I still do it with my my kids and my classes, just some kind of, and Spotify is great, you know, play me some calm music for 20 minutes, just picks it and off you go. And both the kids now have, um, like like an Amazon or an Alexa or whatever in their room and when they're reading we put on meditation music when it's mm -hmm. lights out we set that that it's 20 minutes of meditation music and again I just find I've got one that's a complete overthinker and would start to process everything through the day so he really likes stuff where they're talking and they're you know giving him something to focus on instead of that spiraling negativity that can happen and my daughter kind of loves the wishy-washy sounds and that kind of uh you know stuff that she finds really satisfying and it just helps them ease off into a nice deep sleep early wow amazing yeah and it's yeah. so fabulous stuff that you've I suppose figured out like loads of people different households we have lots of different overlaps and then mass differences between siblings and um, but it's great that you've been able to kind of set up you know different parameters you know that that work for different kids because yeah sometimes... and look that didn't it doesn't it doesn't happen straight away but I think once you start tuning into your kids and realizing actually that's sending him do lally I don't know why it does or what it's about you know that you, you just need to stop doing that and you know the number of times even now even if it's after a hurling match or something like that I might say come on jump in the bath now look you know maybe it's later and I'd ideally like him to have a shower and get ready for bed quick but I know the bath is going to calm him down it's going to reset him put him in a better frame of mind he's not going to beat himself up about the match when he's got falling asleep all of those things I think um when Bethan and I do the podcast, the mum mind, we say, you have to play detective with your kids. You know, you have to think, okay, what's working for this one that doesn't work for that one and try as much as you can to kind of be the, the divider, <laughs> you know, that you, you're the one saying, okay, well, you can do this and you can do that. And if there's a common ground, even better amazing yeah that's that's so great Steph hopefully for any of our parents or even you know teachers tuning in that hopefully they can pick up some cheap tips and tricks mm. um, that might help them along the way and and Steph if people want to know a little bit more about you know getting in touch with you and then some of your workshops how best can they yep. liaise with you on those things 
Yep, kinderama.com. You'll find info at kinderama.com or I'm kinderama on Instagram and LinkedIn and Facebook and all those things. So yeah, just drop me a message. And if if I can help with a particular, um, you know, a lot of preschool parents would get in touch and say, oh, they're very anxious around this kind of stuff. If I can help, I've been doing it 20 odd years now. Uh, so if I can help, I will. Or if I know somebody that can help you, I'll, I'll put you in touch. There's no issue with that whatsoever. Perfect. Well, Steph, it's so lovely to have you on. Thank you so much for, no for all of your words of wisdom. Um, it's so great to Hopefully you know, get help. different. <laughs> I'm sure they will. I'll be implementing a few myself, I'm Excellent. sure. But listen, thank you so much um, for coming on. Thanks, everybody, for listening. And hopefully we'll speak to you all again soon.